secretarial school decided to have the contest. How long before supper will be ready? Soon. Go on, Billy Joe, so the school decides to have a contest. To find out what? How long a man can go without eating? Uh, Joe, <laughs> Billy's trying to tell us how she won herself a job. A job? That'll take your appetite away. <laughs> So anyway, they picked the best four students. There was Gwen Phelps, Etta Fowler, and Prunella Plout. You mean you won out over Selma's daughter? Yeah. Wait till Mom starts rubbing it in. Selma, has your daughter been in any contest with my daughter lately? My daughter is... <laughs> Go on, Billy Joe. Well, the contest was really a test. And the teacher gave us this very hard dictation, which we had to type up. And we were judged on speed, neatness, and accuracy. And I won. Oh, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> yeah, me too. When do we eat? Oh, wait a second. <laughs> what kind of job did you win? I am going to be private secretary to Oliver Fenton. Who's Oliver Fenton? Mr. Fenton is only the writer that has written some of our best sellers. There was uh, Dr. Love. Fall on a spring afternoon, and his last book won a best award, The Carpet Sweepers. <laughs> I never read it, but it sure sounds like a real lint picker. <laughs> you know anybody named Fenton lives around here? Oh, he doesn't. Mr. Fenton spends part of the time in Paris, part of the time in Rome, and he spends the rest of the time in New York. Then why does he want to live in Hooterville? For atmosphere. His next book is about a small town. Say, what's Mr. Fenton like? I don't know. He doesn't get in till tomorrow night, and I don't go to work till nine the next morning. Honey, why don't you tell us the rest of this at supper? Uncle Joe's starved. Not anymore, eh? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it is not. <laughs> Mom, does this look all right? Mm. Gonna wear it Saturday night? No, I'm gonna wear it to work. No, you're not. <laughs> Wear this. It's more suitable for business. But Mr. Fenton isn't a businessman. He's a writer. Then let's, uh, keep his mind on his writing. But, Mom, this is so unsophisticated. Mr. Fenton has traveled all over the world. Then he isn't interested in sightseeing. <laughs> Mom, you want to catch your death a cold, sitting around with bare shoulders in a drafty office? Oh, uh, I won't be working in an office. Mr. Fenton has rented the old Ramsey house. What? All writers work at home. His wife gonna be around? Oh, he's not married. Then wear this. <laughs> Mom, this needs shortening. I'll shorten it. You haven't got the right color thread. I'll get it. I don't want to cause any trouble. Then wear this. <laughs> going to work. Yep. And it seems like only yesterday I caught her with her hand in the jelly bean jar. As a matter of fact, it was only yesterday. <laughs> I turned my back. Oh, morning, Kate. Morning, Selma. Morning, Sam. Selma. Uh, has your daughter been in any contest with my daughter lately? <laughs> You're referring to that contest they had at the school. Even if Prunella had won it, I wouldn't have permitted her to take the job. Why not? I'm a little more careful than some people about who I'd let my daughter work for. Now, there's a remark that's going to need some explaining. Do you know what kind of books Oliver Fenton writes? No, what kind? That kind. Well, what kind's that kind? The kind no decent, self-respecting woman would be caught dead reading. Take his last one, the, the carpet sweepers. Oh, oh you read it. Of course. And was it that kind of book? Definitely. Well, I like to make up my own mind. I'll get it out of the library and I'll read it myself. You won't find it in the library. Well, you still got it out? I had it banned, both here in Hooterville and in Pixley. How about that? Selma is a two-city book banner. <laughs> if you doubt my judgment, I'll loan you my copy. Well, I'd be glad. <laughs> I keep it under lock and key. I wouldn't want my son to find it. Of course not. The boy's only 32 years old. <laughs> D do you know anything about Oliver Fenton? Only that he writes those kind of books. What kind? Oh, Sam. <laughs> Would you mind 
I'm sitting over there. You're a little too young for this. <laughs> you're not going to work for Mr. Fenton. Why not? Did you ever read any of his books? No. Read this. No, don't. <laughs> What's the matter with you? There's nothing the matter with me. You're just not going to work for him. Well, you just can't say I'm not going to work for him without giving me a reason. Oh, I've got plenty of reasons, and they're all in this book. For once in her life, Selma Plot was right. About what? Oliver Fenton. Here. Read this. Go ahead. Tony took Lisa in his arms and kissed her ardently. Don't seem to be too much action. <laughs> Mom, is that why you won't let me work for Mr. Fenn? Because he writes love stories? Mm-hmm. You've read love stories. Yes, I have. But there's a difference between reading them and having some world-traveling man dictating them to my daughter. Hey, he ain't a bad-looking fella for a writer. <gasps> He's handsome. Take a good look at him. It's the last you're going to see of him. Mom! I won the contest and I got the job and I'm going to take it. Do you see what a bad influence he is on you? You're defying your mother. I'm not defying you. All I'm saying is that you're being unreasonable. All I'm saying is the matter is closed. <laughs> well, looks like supper's going to be late again tonight. <laughs> sobbing her eyes out. I'm sorry, Uncle Joe. You're just being stubborn. I am not being stubborn. I'm just not changing my mind. <laughs> Ain't that's not like you. You've always prided yourself on the fact that you brought your daughters up knowing right from wrong. Billy's got a pretty good right. I don't like the idea of her sitting there while somebody makes up all this romantic goulash in front of her. She might get to take it personally. Ah, there ain't nothing romantic in this book. <laughs> Page 62, Tony kisses Lisa. Page 64, Tony kisses Alice. Page 68, Tony kisses Wanda. Just shows Tony knows a lot of girls, likes to kiss them. <laughs> Did you know that Selma Plout had this book banned from the Hooterville Library? Selma Plout? Yes, she was in Sam's. And needed and you right out of your good senses. She's just jealous because Billy Joe went out over Prunella. All I got to say is if Billy Joe was my daughter, Selma Plowden or nobody else would talk me out of not trusting her. But I do trust her. Then why is she in there crying bags under her eyes so she won't be able to go to work tomorrow? You know, Uncle Joe, it's... It's just a shame you never had children of your own. No, thanks. It's tough enough being mother to them three. <laughs> Joe Bradley. Oh, from the secretarial school. Come in. Oh, thank you. Is Mr. Fenton in? I'm Mr. Fenton. Um, Mr. Fenton Jr., the writer. Oh, that's me. I've been working all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was taken 30 years ago. It's just the skin that's aged. I uh, was wearing this. And that was taken. <laughs> Somehow, the stuff I write calls for a man with hair. Have you read it? Uh, no, sir. You've been banned in Hooterville. Oh, yes. I was banned in Pixley, too. And I'm on the borderline in Crabwell Corners. Yes, Mr. Fenton, I hope you don't hold this against me, but I'm not like the rest of Hooterville. I may be a small-town girl, but I've got a big city outlook. Hold it. Hold it. <clears throat> I hope you won't hold this against me, Mr. Dillian. I'm not like the rest of Snyderville. I may be a small-town girl, but I've got a big city outlook. 
Oh, that will be a great line for Candice. She's my cornball heroine. Mr. Finn. Oh, no offense, but that line had the ring of truth to it. That's why I came here to write, to get the flavor of a small town and its people. Oh, well, then I can help you with your novel. Gee, you wouldn't believe some of the things that have happened to me. Uh, for instance, Henry, Henry Brewster, uh, came over one night to take me for a ride, and we went up in the... Oh. Oh. Excuse me. It's not boredom. I just need some sleep. I, uh, I finished almost two chapters last night. Will you, uh, will you type them up and make two copies? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Miss Bradley, will you, uh, keep this between you, me, and, uh, <coughs> Julius? <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Chapter One. George Blackwell took Candice in his arms and kissed her ardently. She hadn't seen him for some time, so this was a very fond meeting for both of them. Hey, I just got back from town. I took a walk down to the old Ramsey place. What for? Well, I thought you might be worried about Billy Joe. I'm not. Hey, the shades were down. Would you like a piece of pie? <laughs> Didn't you hear me? The shades were down. Yes, I heard. I've got uh, blueberry and apple. What kind of a mother are you? Your daughter's alone in that house with that kissing story writer. The shades are down, and all you do is stand around and offer me my choice of blueberry and apple. I'll take apple. <laughs> I'm not worried. Why not? You told me not to. The reason I told you not to worry is because I didn't want to worry you. <laughs> if you'd listened to me in the first place, you wouldn't let her take this job. <laughs> You were the one that told me it was all right. Well, how did I know you was going to take my advice? You never have before. I never will again. <laughs> take my advice and go into town and get her out of there. I was up half the night reading that book. Uncle Joe, calm down. Billy Joe's all right. Well, how can you be sure? Mothers have a way of knowing. George Blackwell took Daphne in his arms and kissed her ardently. He had kissed many girls before. Allison, Marjorie, Gwendolyn, Florence, Sylvia, Agnes. Excuse me, is Wallace Halliburton here? I... Oh, say, aren't you Billy Joe Bradley? <laughs> Why, Billy Joe, what are you doing here? I might ask you the same thing. Well, I came to see Wallace Halliburton. If he ain't here, I'll wait. Mr. Halliburton lives two blocks down. Oh, uh, when did he move? Right after you sold him the house. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, Marie. <laughs> Are you the lady that shipped a crate of rhubarb to... <laughs> Billy Joe, imagine seeing you here. <laughs> imagine anybody wanting to ship rhubarb this time of year. Hot house. It's hot air. <laughs> Joe, that's fully hot air, hot house. <laughs> Charlie Wins Floyd do. Well, he's supposed to be... What do you mean? I mean, tell him not to bother. Bye. Hi, Billy Joe. Charlie didn't give me a message not to bother you, so... When he does, don't. <laughs> Already? Oh, didn't your spies report when I left work? Spies? Oh, didn't they tell you the exact time that I kissed Mr. Fenton goodbye? They didn't say one word about your kissing, Mr. <laughs> Mom, how could you? Your mother's practically been beside herself with worry. It's all I could do to keep her from going in herself. What? Kate, next time take my advice. When I tell you not to worry, don't worry. Uncle Joe. <laughs> Hi, Billy Joe. How'd the work go today? Oh, well, it's hard to say. I spent most of the afternoon opening the door. Yeah, your mother's been so worried about Billy Joe. Don't you wish you don't keep quiet. Well, I've had my say. Remember my advice. Don't worry. What kind of man is Mr. Fenton? Oh, he's charming. 
Is his hair really that wavy? Oh, yes. Uh, I couldn't take my eyes off of it all day. Uh, uh, Betty Jo, we need a couple of serving spoons. Is the work hard? It's fascinating. Well, just sitting there listening to Mr. Fenton's thrilling voice, dictating the most romantic passages. Cynthia, I love you. But it's as though he were saying, Billy Joe, I love you. Tomorrow you start looking for another job. <laughs> oh, Mr. Fenn is counting on me. Well, he's going to put me in his novel. To him, I'm Hooterville. What kind of dull book is he writing? <laughs> There's nothing dull about it. Well, he's going to use some of the romantic things that have actually happened to me. <laughs> What other uh, incidents are you planning to reveal to uh, Mr. Fenton? Oh, well, remember the time that uh, Doc Stewart had to go to the county seat and I had to nurse Mr. Ziffel's prize sow back to hell? <laughs> nurse his prize? Mom, that was drama. <laughs> you know, Uncle Joe was right. I don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> was shocked. She pushed George away from her and said, uh, something in here smells like fly spray. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, Candice was shocked. She pushed George away from her and said, something in here smells like fly spray. <laughs> no, I was just commenting that, uh, you're wearing perfume? Yes, sir. Fireball. Do you like it? Well, it's, uh, Unique. And today, for the first time, Oliver noticed the perfume I was wearing. Took him a week to notice that? Because he got a cold? <laughs> well, perhaps he never stood as close to me as he did today. I'm not worried. <laughs> Miss Bradley, can you read the name of this city? This type is so small. Here? Uh, no. There. Oh, Wagonville. <laughs> Looked like Wigginville to me. <laughs> Boy, you sure have wonderful eyes. And then Oliver took my hand in his and said, Billy Joe, you have such wonderful eyes. <laughs> I'm not worried. <laughs> George's practiced eye scanned the cozy little table. All was ready for Candice. The trap was baited with candles, champagne, and caviar. You like caviar, Miss Bradley? Oh, I've never, uh, uh turned it down. <laughs> I always serve my women caviar and champagne. You know, uh, I've almost finished half the book, thanks to your efficiency. I'm glad to have been an inspiration to you. Yes. <laughs> You're a very fine typist. I wish I could take you to Paris to work with me on my next book. Oh, thank you. My publisher asked me to send uh, as much as I could as quickly as possible. Uh, perhaps if you came early tomorrow morning, you could retype... Well, listen, uh, if it's important, I can go back tonight and work. Billy really, Joe, you're late. Ah, uh, the cannonball had boiler trouble. Oh, well, sit down. We haven't started yet. Oh, I haven't got time. I have to change and get back to town. Oliver and I are working late tonight. Don't that worry you? No. <laughs> really, Joe, you should have some supper. I'm having dinner with Oliver. Wow. You picked the right night. We're having leftovers. What are you having? Oliver always serves his women caviar and champagne. Wow. Well, couldn't you do this work tomorrow? When Oliver needs me, I must go to him. He told me I was his inspiration. He'd like to take me to Paris. Au revoir. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm worried. Come on, unlock this door. Oliver's expecting me. Don't worry. One of the Bradley girls is going to keep your dinner date. Ah! Where's Oliver Fenton? I'm Oliver Fenton. You're a... Where's your wavy hair? Over there. Mr. Fenton? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, why? Lots of men wear them. <laughs> Not to try and deceive young girls into drinking caviar and champagne so you can lure them to Paris. Lure them? Who are you, madam? I'm Billy Joe's mother. That's who I are, am. Oh, well, now, 
There's been a misunderstanding. Oh, that? there certainly has. And I'm here to straighten it out. Now, you may give all your other women caviar and champagne, but not my Billy Joe. Oh, hold it. Hold it. There's your champagne and caviar. It's a ham sandwich and a bottle of pop. I got them for her at the diner. Probably your supper. Oh, I can't eat that stuff. I've got ulcers. <laughs> you are not doing them any good. What about Paris? Billy Joe never lies to me. And she said that you said... All I said was she was a very good typist. And I wish I could take her to Paris. Uh-huh. <laughs> the type. How come you got close enough to her to sniff her perfume? Sniff it? I've got sinus trouble. I've got high blood pressure. I'm too old to play games. And the only thing that I'm interested in chasing is a sure cure for baldness. <laughs> I must admit that after seeing you, you're not exactly Billy Joe's type. But why would she say you said those things? Whatever she said I said, I probably did say. But she took them out of context and made them sound romantic. That's my Billy Joe. <laughs> Why don't we sit down and talk this over calmly? Well... Uh, have you had supper yet? Uh, no. Well, be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> Ever eaten caviar, Mrs. Bradley? <laughs> no. All the women in my books eat caviar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't do anything for me except make me thirsty. Oh. Or maybe it was a ham sandwich. Ah, some more mineral water? No, thank you. <laughs> you like that stuff? Well, uh, they say it's good for my ulcers. <laughs> now, you were telling me that when your husband passed away, you were left with the three girls and the hotel. That's right. What kind of uh, guests do you get? Mostly traveling salesmen. Traveling salesmen, eh? It's from New York. Uh -huh. Hurry up and open it up. Come on, Ma. I'm doing the best I can. It's a book. Yes. Ollie promised to send me a copy. Ollie? Albert. <laughs> wow. Woman with a hotel. Gosh, the book he dictated to me wasn't about a hotel. It wasn't? There's something written in here. To Kate Bradley, a woman with a story that needed telling. Affectionately, Ollie. <laughs> Mom, he wrote a book about you. What's she to write about me? Stanley Markham walked up the steps of the Leafy Bower Hotel and put down his sample case. Uncle Jonas... Creaked up from his favorite rocker and said, She's a waiting for you, son. Stanley rushed into the lobby, and there she was, Catherine Hadley. He took her in his arms and kissed her ardently. Mom! <laughs> oh, it's not true. None of it. All I did was tell him a little bit about how I came to run a hotel, and he turned on his machine and his imagination. Now, girls, let this be a lesson to you. When a man offers you caviar and champagne, you know what he's up to. But look out for the one that sneaks up on you with a ham sandwich and mineral water. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.